Good evening, Tiffin. You're watching tonight's edition of News 10 Live. Tonight, hear about New Regal's latest council meeting. And why the Ohio Department of Education is seeking stimulus money. Good evening. News 10 Live is coming up next. And welcome back, and good evening, Tiffin. I'm Katie Pierce. And I'm Sam Kinkoff. The Ohio Department of Education has submitted a memorandum making them eligible for the U.S. Department of Education's Race to the Top program, which will grant more federal funding provided they follow guidelines, which ask for new standards, which among other things includes preparing students for success in collegiate studies, the workplace, and how to compete in a global economy. Along with the memorandum is over 250 traditional public school and more than 200 community schools who have submitted memorandum of understanding, which will allow those schools to receive funding from the Race to the Top program. Local schools to send memorandums of understanding include Bridges Community Academy and Buckeye Central Local School District. However, Tiffin Public Schools have not issued a memorandum of understanding due to the fact that the second step of the agreement process is the acceptance on the part of the teachers union, which should not accept it based on the vague nature of the language in the memorandum. And New Regal's Village Council experienced a major shakeup in their first meeting of the 2010 year. It all began with Major Her or excuse me, Mayor Harold Courtney swearing in the office Swearing in office members Larry Bullion, Chris, Rick Kissler, Dale Nye, and Lenny Thies, as well as Les Stibe. Throughout the meeting, various members of the council stepped down and were quickly replaced. However, Howard, excuse me, Howard Elkert resigned as council member and was replaced by Daria Bakes. Council, legal counsel John Gershry resigned as well as, Mayor, as, well as Mayor, Mayor Hailed Courtney. As soon as Courtney stepped down from mayor, newly appointed council member Lenny Thies asked for his name to be removed as council president, and Larry Bullion was named the council president. For the next council meeting, Bullion will also serve as mayor. And in more local news, the Board of Education for Hopewell Loudoun Schools will be holding a special session tonight at 5.45 to take the final steps in placing a bond levy for the building of a new K through 12 schoolhouse. This comes after the community, a community wide survey was issued and the response is indicated that the community would want to proceed with the building of the new school using a combination of property and income taxes. The co-chair of the committee said that the survey also indicated that levy for the auditorium and athletic complex should not be placed on the May ballot. One of the chief concerns with the building is problems with the heating system which endangers the computer lab in the building. To make repairs of the issue would cost $10,000. Despite experience, some cutbacks which resulted in losing four employees, Fostoria's police department saw improvement. Police Chief John McGuire gave a quick review of the past year's annual report to council, which included some surprising numbers, including 12,468 calls being responded to and an overall reduction of larger crimes from 3.5% compared to the previous year. Over time was also reduced with 203 drug-related arrests and 91 drug cases handled by the Metric Drug Unit in Fostoria. The chief alongside Mayor John DeVoli and Service Safety Director Dennis Flieger prese presented accommodations to specific personnel who are instrumental in solving particularly dangerous crimes, offered administrative support, or handled special crime operations. And in other news, heavy rainfall buffets, California's authorities prepare for flooding and mudslides. The city of Los Angeles has been hit the hardest, with rainwater accumulation expected to reach 5 to 8 inches by tonight alone. The storm has flooded roadways, schools, and could mudslides in areas stripped by last year's forest fires. Authorities have evacuated over 500 homes. Los Angeles Police Chief Charles Beck says, If you wait until it starts to pour and the roads become closed, then we're not going to be able to get you out, and you're not going to be able to get out. Mayor Antonio Vlangersov said Wednesday evening that the city of Los Angeles is on high alert. Urban search and rescue teams are on standby to deal with the possible flooding. 
And in U.S. news, former U.S. Senator John Edwards of North Carolina has confessed that he did indeed father a child with his mistress. After a year of denial, Edwards has come clean, saying, quote, It was wrong for me to deny that she was my daughter. I will do everything in my power to provide her with the love and support she deserves, end quote. Edwards earlier admitted to an affair with Riley Hunter during his 2008 presidential campaign. He claimed that after he broke off their relations before Hunter became pregnant. Hunter had been a part of Edwards' entourage during the campaign, receiving $114,000 to film campaign ads. Hunter gave birth to a baby girl named Quinn in February 2008, and Edwards has been providing financial help since saying, quote, I am Quinn's father and have received an agreement excuse me, have reached an agreement with her mother to continue providing support in the future, end quote. And an 83-year-old man has been charged with assault and harassment in Broad Park, New York. Gretch Goffman allegedly attacked 99-year-old Steve Poles over a parking dispute. Poles le lives about above the doctor's office where the dispute occurred. Goffman pulled his car in front of the parking lot and Pollers, in an effort to get his attention, knocked on Goffman's car window. Pollers says when Goffman got out of the car, he, quote, pull, punched me between the eyes and broke my nose, end quote. Goffman then beat Pollers with a metal steering wheel lock, breaking a few ribs. The doctor witnessed the attack and called the police. Pollers was transferred to the hospital and Goffman arrested and charged with assault, menacing, and harassment. Human smugglers in Houston, Texas have begun using residential homes to torture illegal immigrants. Smugglers hold illegal hostage to hostage more, ransom more money from their relatives. Immigration and Customs Enforcement agent Sean McElroy says that illegals are looked at as commodities rather than human beings. ICE agents have busted multiple homes in Harris County where illegals have been held and forced into lewd acts, starved and beaten. Neighboring residents have no idea about the torture. Anna Cauldron says, I just feel sad because you never think about that in your neighborhood. Smugglers exploit the day jobs, most suburban residents and work under the cover of darkness. ICE is cracking down, conducting over 2,000 human smuggling investigations in 2008, specifically in the Houston and Harris County area. Agents deal with the human smuggling at least once a week. And coming up next in international news, hear about how a bombing in Pakistan affected its people. As well as hearing about what British security is doing to crack down on security. Stay tuned.